All right, Joel, it's time for some more quick yes. hits. Yes. It finishes nil-nil between Holland and France with Kylian Mbappe and his mask yeah. sitting this one out. Jules, are you going to credit the Dutch guy? What for? Oh, come on. Okay, okay. listen to me. Expected goals for the Dutch, 0 0.3. Right? Expected goals for the French, 1.55. I think it was something like that. Griezmann, you would have scored at least one of the two chances that Antoine... Producer Freddy would have scored one of the two chances that Antoine Griezmann got. I don't even know how... The French didn't score in that game. It was not perfect. I give you that. You're right. And you can clearly see with that Kylian, it's not the same. Dembele was disappointing on that right-hand side. You saw what Deschamps went to do. He kind of recycled the system from 2018. Very Deschamps-esque. Uh, yes. Very Deschamps-esque. But there were still enough chances for the French to score. They had 29 shots in two games and they haven't scored. The only goal, it was a known goal from Vauber against Austria. So that's a bit worrying. But, you know... Not you sure don't what think, the Dutch uh, guy he's, did. He's facing superior tactical minds like Rangnick and Ronald Koeman. No. I don't know. Okay. I, right. don't know. Right. I don't think so. Xavi Simons' goal, though, in that game, Gab, was disallowed for the Netherlands because Denzel Dumfries, who was offside, was judged to have been interfering with play and with Mac Mignon. Was it the right decision for you? I think it was the right decision. I agree. Uh, I think, look, I, people, it's not about cone of sight, as I hear some people talk about. It's not that he didn't know. It's not that, that Dumfries was blocking his view. It's no. just that he's got this big dude standing next to him. And if he has to dive that way, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to affect you. You're yeah. clearly interfering with play. I don't know what, how much Dumfries could have done differently to get out of the way. Um, but, but, but that's the reality. You, yeah, yeah. Because people said, like, oh, yeah, but Mignon could not have got to the ball if Dumfries wasn't there. Well, well maybe. But Dumfries was there, so he could not have tried and also, dived anyway. his magic mic. He does yeah, what he yeah, likes. You're right. so, Austria beat Poland 3-1 as Robert Lewandowski, again, only makes the bench. He played the last half hour. Yeah. Jules, I don't think Ralf Rangnick's team is fun to play against. No, I don't. And they were good. They were really good. And Poland have been disappointing this whole tournament. They were the first team to be knocked out completely. Uh, and... I like this Austrian team. You know, I really like it. I know Arnatovic is getting older and obviously can't do the things maybe that he used to before, but they're a proper unit. They're a proper team. And I'm not sure if you can press with so much intensity through the whole tournament. I don't know if you play every four days, how that can, that can go. And I guess against the Dutch on Tuesday, it would be good to see. But yeah, I don't. You're right. They're not fun to play against, and I really hope they qualify. I'm going to that game, and I am uh, looking forward to yeah, it. Yeah, so you should. And actually, Trubin is back in goal for Ukraine, and Roman Yaremchuk's control is divine. Gab. I thought you'd like that. Yeah, of course. As they bounce back to be Slovakia two-one, that's more like them. It is more like it. Uh, it also helps when you don't have Lunin in goal throwing. And I look, I, I, I thought Rebrov. Look, Trubin is a phenomenal goalkeeper. He is a better goalkeeper than Lunin. Yeah, the Lunin choice from the start. Was I think it was like, oh, look, he did so well for Real Madrid while the other guys were injured. Yeah, but okay, right. he's still Lunin and, yeah. and Trubin is is the real deal. Um, God, there was this one play. I, I, I'm blanking on who it was. I think it might have been Dovbik on the break. Or it's him and it's him and Mudrik. Uh, you have to watch the highlights just for this, right? It's a two-on-one. It's him and yeah. Mudrik, right? And there's a defender scrambling back and Dovbik's kind of trundling along. And you know that Mudrik is checking his run because he's so much faster. I'm just like, just release the ball into space. Just release the ball. He'll get to it. He'll probably then lose it, but he'll get to yeah. it. Like, no. no. Ah. Didn't happen. Georgi Mamardashvili and a bit of the AR helped Georgia battle to a 1-1 draw with Czechia, as we now call the Czech Republic. Yeah. Jules, we love the big man, don't we? We do. We do. Uh, what a great performance he had. I think 12 saves or something like yeah. that. Uh, Czechia had so many chances, especially in the first half, so many shots, so many chances, and yet they found themselves 1-0 down. Mikotadze is calling that penalty. I love that game. We say we love the Georgia story, Willy Sanyol, all we, those players. We love the Georgia story, but Czech, Czechia. Oh, they should have won the game, there. but they could have lost it at the end because there's yeah. this incredible chance uh, for Georgia to win it 2-1. Georgia, historical point, obviously the first one they ever had in a major tournament. Well done to them. And both teams can still qualify before the last game too. So, very, very good. Mikhail Odise to Bayern for a fee up to 60 million euros. is just about done, Gav. You happy? Do you like this move? Well, we talked about this later on, last night on the show. And people were saying like, oh, but look at all the, all the forwards that they have. Where does he fit in? And I think they're kind of trying to future-proof themselves a little bit. Look, uh, Muller's contract up in 2025. He's 34. Yeah. Uh, Sané's contract up in 2025 had a drop-off. 
I, I, I think they're just preparing in case he doesn't come back. Gnabry is almost like a virtual player because yeah, he's always he's injured, injured when he's there. Yeah. He's up and down. Coman also has a lot of injuries. Brian Saragossa is is about 10 centimeters tall. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, why not bring in somebody younger? And by the way, Sané, Nabri, and Coleman, they're all 28. You know, yeah. So you need to mix up your age profile. A I'm very happy bit. for this thing. Very, very happy. England faced Slovenia on Tuesday night. But Jules, what did you make of Harry Kane's comments towards ex-players turned pundits? And no, he didn't name them, I don't think. He's talking about Gary Lineker. Especially, yeah. Not happy with the criticism. Deserved criticism, I think. Uh, from from pundits, whether they're former players or whether it's us, I think England haven't played well. Even if they've got four points, we yeah. are allowed to criticize them and 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 point out what went wrong, right? Yeah, and he says he, he said stuff like, um, "Oh well, well, you know, they they, they when they play, they didn't do well either." Yeah, and like, and they don't remember uh, what it feels like to play for England and you know get behind us. I mean. First of all, it's not their job to get behind you. Yeah. Second of all, when they played for England, they received a lot more criticism than you Absolutely. did. Absolutely. A lot more. Partly because they weren't as good. Yeah. England didn't perform as well. England have done performed really, really well in the last three major tournaments. Yeah. And that's why you've gotten less criticism. But when you get a little bit of criticism, just deal with it. I didn't like that reaction from him. The USA opened their Copa America campaign with a 2-0 defeat of Bolivia. Gab, how about that Christian Pulisic goal? Ah, oh, that was that, that, that was like, that was fire. policy. Yeah, he's he's doing really, really well. Balogun, I saw also f from what I saw. Yeah, uh, performed good. Assisted well. Assisted by Pulisic, by the way, for his goal. And Gio Reyna on the pitch and contributing. Yeah, you know? it's good. Virtual Gio Reyna. Good. It was a really good start. I mean, Bolivia, a terrible team. No, not good. Juventus have been busy, Jules. Yeah. We have numbers on the Douglas Luiz deal. Yes. Kefren Churam could be on his way from Nice for $35 million. And contract talks with Adrian Rabio aren't going great, which suggests to me he'll be gone as a free agent. Yeah, he's a free agent, obviously. I think Juve wants to keep him on the same money, potentially. I think he's hiring a move, maybe a bit more money. He's on $7.5 million net a year, which is already a lot of money. Yeah. Maybe a signing on fee somewhere else. We'll have to see. Douglas Luiz, $50 million go... Aston Villa, uh, yeah, Aston Villa were for Juventus, for Ealing Junior and Bayern next year. It will be 22 million. So in the end, I guess everybody's happy. Right? Yeah, that's how you see I, it. People are going to talk about inflated values, blah, 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 plus Valencia. But I don't think 14 million for Ealing Junior is so out of whack, or indeed 8 million for, for Bayern Echea. You know? Yeah. So as long as they keep them semi credible, but yeah. I'm sure we'll talk more about this. Yeah, definitely. And for Kefren, I would be very happy if. He follows in his father's footsteps, obviously, 20 odd years later and play for Juventus. And I think Thiago Mota would make him a really, really good player. I'd be happier if he followed his father's footsteps properly and joined Parma. Ah, oh. God, more fun. We swap deals and amortization in the Premier League. Ian Madsen is on his way to Aston Villa from Chelsea. We say that for 35 million pounds or euros. Omari Kellyman. Yes, you might not have heard of him. He's going the other way. For 19 million euros. That's right. Which seems a lot of money for somebody who's played 37 minutes of Premier League football in his whole life. Like we've talked about these swap deals. We talked about the implications. I'm just going to tell you what I estimate to be the net movements for him. Villa have made themselves 11 million euros. Yeah. Um, sorry, 11 million pounds. And Chelsea have made 32 million. Off the swap deal, Villa also have uh, a left back, but that's okay. They can sell one of their incumbent left back, so yeah, move them out and true. generate more money. This is the Monchi way of wheeling and dealing. Uh, Gerardo Arteaga scores the only goal as Mexico edge Jamaica 1-0. Joe's a bit underwhelming from M3. Completely. Despite the support, despite feeling like they were playing at home. Late goal, they didn't play that well. Santi Jimenez up front was not involved enough, not good enough. I still think there's a lot of work to do for these Mexican sides. And they were not good going into the tournament in their friendlies, preparation friendlies. They haven't been great. I guess they won. That's the most important yeah. for now. Edson uh, injured as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the biggest worry as well. Argentina began their Copa America campaign with a 2 0 win over Canada on Thursday night. And they're back on Tuesday against Chile. But Gab, I want to ask you about the pitch because Lionel Scaloni called it a disaster. Yeah, I mean, Martinez didn't like the pitch either, complaining about it. Look, again, this is very simple. You, uh, Ali Moreno on the FC show put this very, very well. You want to play in the U.S., you want to play in the big stadiums uh, and make a lot of money. Those are NFL stadiums. Yeah. They have artificial turf down, turf down. So either you play an artificial turf, the way, by the way, a lot of people around the world do, or you accept the fact that if you want real grass, 
it's going to be really, really hard for the grass to kind of bed down yeah. in the space of a couple of days. And I think that's a challenge. And you just deal with it. It's a bad pitch for the opponent, too.